Hello, my name is Tim Meany. I'm a Keysight application engineer. and Welcome to this next video in our Automating Keysight Instruments with LabVIEW series. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, using a LabVIEW plug-and-play driver uh, to communicate with our instruments. Let's get started by launching LabVIEW. And from our startup screen here, let's go into Tools, Instrumentation, Find Instrument Drivers. If you don't have your instrument driver already installed, uh, this is an easy, convenient way to do it. So when the instrument driver finder window comes up, uh, we have a couple of options here. We can scan for instruments by hitting the button or by expanding this folder here. Uh, this can take a moment as we search you know, all of the available interfaces, USB, LAN, GPIB, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, for our purposes here today, I'm actually gonna call out the instrument I'm looking for. And in this case, I have a Keysight Technologies 34461A connected. So I'll choose Keysight Technologies, and I'm just gonna add the model number here. And we'll go ahead and choose the NI certified drivers only. And we'll do a search. It only takes a moment here, and we do find uh, an instrument driver that supports that instrument. We can see some additional information over here in terms of ratings, revision number, and supported instruments. I'm going to go ahead and uh, install that driver. Now this can take a moment. It's going to actually go out and uh, place the driver file in the uh, LabVIEW install directory. If you go out to that uh, directory, you'll see that there's a folder there uh, called Instrument Library. It's actually abbreviated inst.lib. And that's where all of your driver, plug and play driver files would be located. So we've finished our installation. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, select start using this driver. Now, I don't want to open a new project or anything. I'm actually going to go ahead and just close that window. And this will bring me back to our, our start page. Uh, here we're going to do a new VI, and let me just shrink this down a little bit, and let's access our functions palette so we can now get to our driver. So if I right click on my block diagram, I'm going to go down to Instrument I.O., Instrument Drivers, and you see I should have a driver that represents my 34461A. I'll go ahead and pin that and drag it up here so that we can see it. Now, when we use this driver, we're going to start uh, with an initialize. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and grab a close, place both of those on our block diagram. Next, we want to perform uh, some type of operation with our DMM. <clears throat> in this case, I have a, a DC power supply connected to the input of my DMM, so we'll just make a DC voltage measurement. So if we go in here to our configure palette, and we go to measurement, we can set up our measurement here. I'm going to grab the configure measurement VI, place that down, and you'll see with my cursor on it, the context help shows me the name of all of our different um, input terminals. And you notice what, one of the nice things about using a LabVIEW driver is that with a single VI here, we can set up a number of different parameters all with one VI. And you see that on the input terminals. We choose our measurement function, um, our, our range, our resolution, etc. So we're going to configure our measurement. We're also going to want to read back the value. So we'll go up a level or two, go into the data, and we'll grab the read VI. And we'll place that down in our block diagram. So there we have the four items that will essentially make up our LabVIEW program. We're going to initialize our instrument. We're going to set it up to make a measurement, and then we're going to read back the data and then close the uh, driver session here. So let's wire up a couple of these terminals. We'll take the Visa resource name and bring that all the way through. 
We'll do the same for the error out and error in terminals. I'm going to add a indicator for the error out on our close so we can see it on the front panel if we have any errors. Um, over here on our initialize, the first thing I'll do is right click on our Visa resource name and we'll create a control. This will place a control on our front panel that represents a Visa resource name or our Visa address. And the rest of the items, holding my cursor over the initialize VI, uh, I'm going to leave as the default. And it shows you that the ID query and the reset are both set to true. So moving on to our measurement VI, I'm going to choose uh, the actual measurement we want to make. Just going to do a create constant. In this case, it already defaults to the measurement we want to make, which is DC voltage. And let's move this out of the way. And we'll leave the auto range on, and the resolution, we'll leave that as a default. Moving on to our read VI, we want to have uh, our reading displayed on our front panel. So we'll uh, do a create indicator. And we're going to leave this at single point because we're only making one measurement. And we'll go back here and take a look at our front panel. Back here on our front panel, let's go ahead and organize this. We'll grab the measurement. Let's bring it over here. And we'll make sure we can see that. And it looks like we're all ready to, to run. We'll look at our run button. It's not broken. We can clean up this uh, diagram here, which is not very messy anyways, but uh, with a, a great number of objects on here, this tool, this cleanup diagram can be very useful. Okay, so it looks like we're let it, ready to run this. Let's go ahead and select our instrument. In this case, we have our 34461A is connected via USB. I'll select its visa address, and let's run our program. So we went ahead and ran the program. We did our initialize, set up the measurement. I have a 5-volt uh, DC signal connected to the DMM, and that's what we're reading back. Hopefully you find this helpful, and thanks for watching.